Hi again. I was starting to type up a daily devotion and realize it's more of a narrative. In order to type all that up, it'd be a lot to read. So I thought, I'll record it and see how it goes. Some of these ideas came from a small group I did a number of years ago called Elijah, Stressed and Anointed. And I thought I would share some of those thoughts here. Uh, one, Elijah, if you know the story, it starts in 1 Kings 17. He goes and tells evil King Ahab there's going to be a drought, and there was. But God takes care of Elijah. He puts him by the creek Cherith and feeds him with ravens until the creek dries up. Then he sends him to the widow of Zarephath, and uh, that's outside of Israel. And this woman who has nothing feeds Elijah with the meal and uh, the oil that never runs out during the entire time. He brings her son who dies back to life. He does amazing things. He then confronts Ahab. When he confronts Ahab, he then takes on the 400 prophets of Ashereth and the 450 prophets of Baal. Wins, lightning comes down and, and ignites his sacrifice and nothing happens to the sacrifices of these 850 people. Victory, prays for rain, rain comes. He, he runs and beats Ahab who is riding a chariot uh, to the city of Jezreel. And, and so here is this guy, a hero, successful, wonderful. He is a great prophet. In fact, at the transfiguration when Jesus is up on the mount and he turns or uh, reveals some of his glory and, and he shines brightly, who is it that talks to him? Elijah and Moses about the exodus or the departure of Jesus, which was a short time coming. So here is an amazing guy, an amazing guy. But remember what also happened to him. There was a time after the, the rain came and Ahab told Jezebel, his wife, what happened. And Jezebel sends a messenger to Elijah and says, you're a dead man. And what does Elijah do? You would think with all these victories he had, he would say, I'm going to send lightning down and strike you, and God will take care of me. Whatever it might be, he, he knew God would handle him, but he didn't act that way. Instead, what did he do? He got up and he ran. He ran a day's journey into the wilderness, and he said this. He said, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father. He couldn't handle it anymore. He's asking God to take his life. After all these victories, one word from Jezebel caused this. And, and why? And, and some people, it doesn't say here in the Bible, but, but some people in the study that we were doing makes the point when you look at the whole story of Elijah, it seems like he burned himself out. He was stressed out. He, he was doing all these victories, but he was exhausted. And what happened to him? When Jezebel says one word to him, it snapped. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. And how did God restore him? Well, he laid down and slept. And it says, an angel of the Lord woke him up and said, eat, drink, you're going to need your strength. He ate, he drank, he went back to sleep, woke him up again, eat, drink, you're going to need your strength. And then he went to the mountain of the Lord. And this is where we're going to pick it up in chapter 19, in verse 9. It says, then he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, throw down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Sounds a little bit like, oh, poor me, I'm the only one around. He felt isolated, and he acted that way. Verse 11, he said, and he said, that means God, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. 
but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Literally, it is a thin silence. Quiet. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Exactly what God said before. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it. And the Lord said to him, go, return. And God tells him he has a work to do. Why am I bringing this up? Elijah, if you think about him as a stressed person, poor me, I'm all by myself. And that might have been true, but it wasn't true. Because later on, it says at verse 18, yet I have, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. There's 7,000 people, not just Elijah. But Elijah couldn't see that because he was stressed. And so I wanted to talk to you about some things. Now you might be dealing with what we're dealing with, this isolation really well. Or like Elijah, you might be thinking, I and only I am here and struggling. You're not alone. And remember that. And, and God is still in control. And what God would want you to do, and, and take this lesson from Elijah, he would want you to take care of yourself physically, relationally, and spiritually. And these are the things that we can do to avoid it. Elijah couldn't hear the voice of Jesus, the voice of Jesus, the voice of God, because he was too stressed out to hear until God spoke to him. God doesn't always speak with the, the rocks crashing and the, the loud that anyone can hear. Sometimes God speaks through a still small voice and you need to be listening for it. How do you do that? One, take care of yourself physically. You, you need to get your rest. You need to get some exercise, even if it's five minutes a day. Outside is ideal. The vitamin D from the sun is supposed to be excellent for you. Do that. You, you need to take care of yourself relationally. Elijah got himself into trouble when he thought he was the only one. And because we can't get anywhere close to anyone else, you know, in person is better than talking to someone via a conferencing app, FaceTime, Zoom, any of these things, Skype. But that's better than a phone call because you can see their faces. But a phone call is better than text because you can hear their voices. Text is better than email because it's more immediate. But however you can do it, try to reach out to someone. Try to talk to someone. Whether it's a FaceTime call, whether it's going out in your yard and saying hi to your neighbor, whatever it is, you're not alone. And then spiritually, what are you doing to feed yourself? You need that. You know, I, and I know some of you have small kids, and as soon as you get up, it's a mad rush. Well, maybe before you get up, if you can just lay in bed five minutes and talk to God and, and ask him, help me through this day, that would be helpful. If you can, we keep sending out these daily devotions. This is probably going to be more than five minutes, but we're hoping to keep it to where it's five minutes or less so that you can look at it, you can think about it, and then go about your day. Hopefully you're doing more, but at least do that. There are other devotions, and, and I'm sure better ones, people who get paid to do this stuff. If Find what works for you. Because we are not just spiritual beings. We are not just physical beings. We're not just emotional, relational beings. We're all of those together. And when we neglect one, the other areas suffer. If you're handling this great, guess what? This is an opportunity for you to reach out and help someone else. Second Corinthians 1, Paul tells the Corinthians, we are comforted with the comfort that allows us to comfort others. So if you're handling this well, instead of just thinking, well, I'm doing fine, Think about there may be people who are having a hard time. Reach out to them. Talk to them. See if there's anything you can do to help them. At least encourage them. Pray for them. 
if you're struggling, ask for help. Whether it's emailing the church, whether it's talking to a friend, something. If you have a friend and they're struggling and they're not acting like themselves, you know, if they're quiet people who are now talking a lot, talkative people who are now quiet, people who never get angry who are now getting angry, if they're acting different, you need to say, hey, what's going on? How can I help you? are not acting like yourself. Allow them the opportunity to open up, express their fears, their concerns, their struggles, whatever those might be, because that is what the body of Christ is all about. And, and, and I'll leave you with this. You are not alone. You have the Holy Spirit, and you have your church behind you. Talk to you guys soon.